Oh man, this is probably the best setup I've seen. I like the circle vibe. Yeah. It's like a, you feel me? It's like a, yeah, I feel like I'm a Jada Pinkett. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to tell my story. Mm -hmm. All right, well with that said, welcome everybody. Welcome Demetrius. Thank you. How you doing? How you feeling, man? I feel good. I had some good chicken uh, and pizza here. Y'all got some good pizza. Yeah, I don't know where I got it from the hell yeah. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm shocked that that comes as a shock to you. Oh, all. yeah, yeah, yeah. What, do you know what the pizza place was at all? No, it was off Uber Eats. It was like some pizza and wings. Oh. But they did their thing for real. They had the herbs on top of the pepperoni pizza. I got the crushed red peppers, a little, you feel me? A little ginger ale. Yeah. Ginger ale. <laughs> I don't know why they clowned you with the ginger ale. I feel you. Hey, niggas, okay, they can do whatever they want. I got lactose intolerant. I need something to wash down that cheese. <laughs> What Welcome you, uh, everyone to our 2024 keynote speaker. We can give Demetrius um, another round of applause. So once Thank you. Again, once again, this is a safe space. So I just want to preface that one more time. Um, you know, I grew up watching Demetrius. I grew up watching you, like your vines, YouTube. I still follow you to this day. I've been buying the brand, and I know a lot of people here are some supporters of you, so I know everyone's excited. Um, Katie's gonna get started with the first question. Okay, you down for that? Yeah, can I can I get y'all the mic? Give us the mic? Yeah, cause I'm scared that me having the mic with the mic on, I'm gonna have interference. Okay, no problem. Right. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I just your voice is so much louder, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm chilling. Cool. Is this good for everybody? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Um, just to get it started, I know that something that gets a lot in the media and that people talk about is the pressure as a black creative um, to either not get their flowers when they're doing something at a high level, or the pressure that they feel in terms of representing their community properly. And I feel like that's something that we can really talk about and really like get into in your experience with that. Mm -hmm. um, you want to do this for a question? So I was about to answer that. I thought that was a question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the first question is, what are your thoughts on represent representation in media today? And how has representation or the lack of it influenced your creative journey? Um, <clears throat> firstly, I think representation is important, like especially in media. Whatever form that may be, if that's like the TV shows we watch, if that's the news anchors we have, if that's the people behind the writing, you know what I mean, in the writing room, whatever topic, I feel like somebody at least is knowledgeable about it and has experiences about whatever topic it is, always should be in that room. Because those are people that should be sharing those stories. Even if it's not directly their story, being able to be like, no, this makes sense, this doesn't make sense. Um, I think we're going in a really good direction, like all across the board. I would say the thing I don't like, well, I didn't like, I don't know if it's, if it's still working, I think we start seeing through it. It was a lot of pandering of like, you remember when the, when the riots was going on, it was like every show had like a damn cop killing episode, you feel me? Cause like that was something to talk about and it kind of diluted the message, it kind of diluted. Um, and took away from the voices, truly, honestly, you know what I mean? Like, it took away from the people that are experiencing, like, racism, you feel me, to be able to talk about it in a way that makes sense. Because, like, as things get saturated, you stop paying attention to them. And so, like, that was when it would be, like, you become desensitized to seeing, like, black bodies killed on Twitter, you know what I mean? Because it's so much, it's overwhelming. And now you don't want to watch no TV. And now you're not paying attention to the news. And now you don't know, like, what is going on in the world. Um, but then bringing it back to like an art place when it comes to representation, I just like and love that a lot of different like groups get to tell their stories. There's this uh, TV show I watch called Rami, uh, Hulu, and it's about uh, this Arab Muslim guy. And just in general, seeing an Arab Muslim like show damn near in the same vein as like a Atlanta, um, and I'm hearing like his mother speak Arabic and it's just translated, you know what I mean, to English, you know what I mean? Like they're not really 
trying to sell Arab, being Arab to Americans. You're like, this is who we are, this is how it is. And this is what my life looked like growing up. As well as this is funny, this is this. Um, it, was, it was beautiful for me to see, because I went to Dearborn High and I grew up around a lot of Arabs and I know like what the perception is of them based off of media. So to have a space for them to be able, like for him to create a space for them to be able to tell their stories, it, I've seen how powerful that can be. I feel like I was going on a crazy ass tangent. Nah, you're good. And like you said, um, you know, it's coming up more into the media now. Like, how do you feel about people like Quinta Brunson and Abbott Elementary, Issa Rae? You know, you're someone that's doing the same thing. Keith Lee, like, how do you feel about those people getting, like, their attention? I fucking love all them people. Like, Keith, Keith Dahm, he from Detroit. But in general, Keith's like one of the best people I know. You know what I mean? Like, that boy don't do nothing but eat food, love his family, and praise God. You know what I mean? Like, it ain't really nothing to hate on him about. You know what I mean? Even if it was. You know? <laughs> What's up with y'all in this chopped cheese shit, bro? <laughs> but, uh, and then even Quinta. You know what I mean? Quinta was working at, but Quinta been around since the internet. You feel me? Yeah. And so, like, for her to have her moment, and, like, when I say moment, that's not even me trying to say like, oh, she got a little moment, but I'm saying like, but to work and pay off and now you come and in me, now you feel me? Like, and to be celebrated and we didn't see where you come from, it's like, one, it made me believe I could do anything I want to do, but then two, it's like, like you're my friend, so I'm happy for you, you know what I mean? Like, Quinton then gave me some advice that like helped me in like bad moments, you know what I mean? So like to see her do that and know that like, this is just the beginning of this chapter for her life. It's, it's a beautiful thing to watch, you know what I mean? Even at Issa, you know what I mean? And that then allows them to be like, oh, I'm going to reach down and pull you up. I'm going to reach across and pull you with me, you know what I mean? And it just continues to be able to spread people and allow people to do even more and go any further. Yeah, and I was just going to ask, like, as a black creative, what does that feel like, like that experience, like getting your flowers and being recognized after doing all that you do? It's weird. Jared? Yeah, it's weird because, like, uh... It, well, I think when I was walking up there, it was like, it's like, ain't that many people in here? It's about like 70. <laughs> Nigga, it's like two classrooms, you know what I mean? Like, it's more people in here that like, are here to like, listen to me, even if they don't really like, tune in to everything I do, you know what I mean? Like, and Ben Hampton, you know what I mean? Like, that's crazy to me though, you know what I mean? Because everything I've made, I've made in my, my solitude, you know what I mean? Whether it's came from a place of me transmuting pain, or whether it just came from me and my friend having a funny idea, like, you see the numbers, but I'm not seeing the people. Mm -hmm. And then when you see the people, it's like, ah, this is overwhelming. In a good way, in the most yeah. like amazing way possible. But I, I can't really describe what it feels like, you know what I mean? But I've never gotten numb to it. Like it's, it, anytime somebody, I'd be, I'd be 2 a.m., I'm leaving the club. It's like, man, you saved my life. Uh, I'm gonna listen to everything you gotta say. I'm a sober, I listen to everything you gotta say. Cause it actually means something to me, what you saying, cause like, I never think outside of myself. And like when I put into the world, I just be like, I'm just saying this, you know what I mean? I'm not doing it from the sake of like recognizing influence or things like that, you know what I mean? So when I do receive those things and like people tell me the impact, it, it means the world. Yeah. I think you kind of answered our next Damn. question. Damn. It was all good to you. It was, can you recall any defining moments where you were inspired by a black creative in the media or where, you, or where someone expressed that they were inspired by you? Oh. If you can recall like a specific moment. Um, I can't recall a specific moment because I be crying. That's my problem. That's my main problem. I be crying. People be coming to me and I be crying. Um, I say my 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 grandma. Um, my grandma told me that when she get depressed, she watch my videos, and I was like, all right, bro. <laughs> And then she like opened up to me like she like yeah I used to lie about like being on like like antidepressants like to your father and shit like that you know what I mean or going to the therapist like shit like that and she like you make me feel like it's okay to like be honest about that stuff and like bro what and um, I'll say a moment that like um, influenced me or like uh, as a black creative when me looking up somebody else is uh, Donald Lover like when I discover him, it was like a pivotal moment in my life. I was in like eighth grade, ninth grade, and I had found out about community. 
But then I turn on MTV Jams and I see somebody that look like him named Charles Gambino making music. And I'm like, yeah, it's, what's happening here? You know what I mean? And then watching interviews and him being like, I'm working on a show, it's gonna be crazy, boom, boom, show come out, sweep everything. And I'm like, oh, you can do whatever the fuck you want as long as you give it the same effort. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favorite Atlanta episode? <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. That, uh, I think it's, it's, I don't have a favorite episode because I love all the episodes, but the one that comes around the moment you ask me that, it's that, uh, what is it, Crank That episode of the last season, bro? Killer? Bro, when he was in there, <laughs> bro, 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 just like the effort that they put into the side plot of dog, like, yeah, like, working on my rap career, his, his baby mom's driving him off, and he's like, hey, that's, uh, that's paper, I'm gonna go rap to him, and he getting chased, and he, Push him out the way he just fly through the last. How how cartoon like he threw him through that last was so stupid. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love I love I love Donald Glover. That was great. So we're gonna move into the topic of community building. Can so I? Uh, I'm sorry. I got gum and I don't. I feel, my mom would beat me up if I <laughs> if I continue to speak with gum. I fuck around and have some of myself. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Okay, so community building. One mic, one mic, one mic. Thank you guys. So oh, I'm alright. I'm alright, right. good, thank you. In the past, we know you've spearheaded events to bring together your supporters as a community through many different ways, whether that's like the United community or events. One in specific we want to talk about is the roller skating event that you hosted. Um, last year and this year, the Black Student Union, us, we hosted um, Black History Month kickoff and it was at a local roller skating rink. So it was a lot of fun. I know a lot of people here popped out to that. Um, we wanted to draw this parallel and ask you this question. Yeah, so um, I actually want to ask you, do you have like a success story or like a favorite memory of like having like a community building event? And like, how did that feel to you, like seeing that success go <coughs> well? So you're saying like, do I have a moment where I was like, oh, yeah. this, this is working? Yeah. Um, I want to say it was the second annual skating event. It low key was like back to back. It was it was this summer. I was tweaking, dog. Um, everything was kind of just falling into place. Like I typically do something in the summer every year for Detroit, just because I want to provide a safe space for like that kind of teenager, young adult. You might not be able to get in the clubs. It's not really no spot for y'all to go out. You don't want to be at the house, but you might get into trouble. Boom, boom. You know what I mean? Um, where they can just be themselves, they ain't got to come and clamor around me, they can just hang out with their friends. Even if you don't know me and you just find out about the event, just come be in a space. And um, the skating rink is huge. And they be kind of disrespecting me, like, bro, if we shut, if we shut, if we like let you rent it out, like we losing out on this because we just got this amount of people coming in. And I want to say like, we had 1,100 people come. And like, Lil Yachty came, Sada Baby came, Everybody there. I'm like, this is okay. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, and this is a free event. I typically do free events, and so then you get your head when it's a free event because you're like, and then but it's, this shit costs me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so like, certain stuff that you want to do is going because you can't do it all for free. So I did a a field day, and um, that was crazy too because it was not like none of these things are things that I'm thinking someone like me, my age, will care to come to. Just a fun time, no drinks, no, you know what I mean? Like, it ain't about nothing else besides like, we got dunk tank, we got water guns, we got music and ice cream. You know what I mean? Like, all the homies flew in, you know what I mean? Like, Quinn showed up, Kenny flew in town, Angelo flew in town, Big Sean pulled up. And outside of like, names, like, people came and stayed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and had water balloon fights with us, you know what I mean? And so like, I may have had a more successful moment in my life, but like, 
those felt like, okay, this is actually working. People actually care about this. And outside of myself, I have a responsibility to them to continue to do this because I now have provided a space that I don't, I don't get to just take away from them now. Yeah. Um, I actually have a follow-up to that. Um, you were talking a little bit about how you wanted to impact like the young teenage, young adult like space, mm -hmm. um, that age group. Why is that so important to you, to make sure that you can feel like they can still have fun or they can still enjoy themselves at that age and still make sure <clears throat> they can do things without necessarily drinking or whatever you were talking about? Uh, I would say that like, I got into my most trouble in high school, Same. like from start to finish. That's when it's, I'm outside till 11 p.m. on school night, and you know what I mean? But nobody was really paying attention to me. Um, summers is bad, like I'm, I'm just, I'm doing things, it's not like I know I shouldn't be doing them, but also there was no other options. Like it, it ain't nobody at home that care. It ain't no places to go to just be. So I'm at the homie crib, and I'm at, now I'm at the whim of what the homies wanna do, cause I ain't gonna ride home, you know what I mean? So like, whether that may be drugs, whether that may be like little bullshit we doing, fights, whatever, you feel me? Like. It was nothing to really do. And that's why like a lot of people join sports. That's why you might, you know what I mean, like be in a club, but like I ain't had those options, you know what I mean? And so um, I just have a really soft spot in my heart for like, um, I would say probably like 14 to 23, just cause I feel like that's when you're trying to find yourself. And then that's when you're like from high school, you're trying to find yourself and you, you need space to be able to do that safely without like poor influence just a space where a person just grow you know what i mean like because a kid will tell you who they are like on their own if you just allow them to but like when you try to put your influence on them that's when they kind of adjust and contort things to fit what they like want what what they think you want for your approval um and then 18 to like 23 you just thrown into the world and like nigga, figure it out and when i was 18 i moved to la and um it was tough going from a Detroit to an LA, like a big city, all these distractions. And so um, as much as I can, I try to protect people like uh, in that age group, um, selfishly for me, cause it's like, I know what I went through and they, it may not be the same for them, but I just try to provide a space where anybody can be themselves. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's actually really fire. Um, I know that even us, like we try with like on the topic of community to give back and do whatever we can. So we have programs like youth pre or youth program, right? right? Where we go out and we get kids from like Bloomington schools and they come, they hang out with college students. We hang out with them on Sundays. We have U turn where we go to like the correctional facilities and we talk to like young adult men, you know, young adult women. Um, if we have the chance to and like make sure we can like connect with them on another level so that they know essentially the same thing that you're saying, that they can feel that protection, that there's people out there that care about me enough that like, I don't need everything as long as I have like, a sense of community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all we need though. Like, yeah. that's my biggest thing. It's like community, bro. You know what I mean? Like I, I got three older brothers. Mom and dad was married like when I was, until I was 18. You know what I mean? Like, that's all I care about is community and like, to a degree, like once my parents got divorced and my brothers moved away, I'm like, I ain't got nobody. So I just started realizing like, oh, like, anybody can be my family. Anybody could be my community. You know what I mean? Like, then that's when it expanded. And that's when it was like, oh, I give a fuck a lot about these people I talk to on the internet. You know what I mean? Or, oh, I care a lot about like my best friend's family. You know what I mean? And then that's when I just started realizing that anybody can be there for you if you allow them to be, you know what I mean? And it's also, you have a responsibility to the person next to you to be there for them, you know what I mean? Regardless of if you know them or not, you know what I mean? Be the best person you can be for everybody. So, it's hot in here. <laughs> no, I'm fucking Last question on community building. So, you know, recently you made a spotlight series highlighting black-owned businesses, you're celebrating black excellence, the beauty of black hair, 
you got your braids done. Hey. No. <laughs> She's featuring it on like You Matter a lot. So what are your goals and aspirations for your community? And how do you plan to continue nurturing and growing it over time? Y'all been doing a goddamn research, I see. <laughs> <laughs> um, the ultimate goal is um, I just want to provide resources. Like that's that main. Like I would say, space and resources, and then the community will come. You know what I mean? The community is here, realistically. But like, I want physical spaces. You know what I mean? Like those YMCA's, the boys and girls clubs. But like, not just the. Hey, come learn how to swim and play basketball. Like, I want someone to be able to come and there's these grand pianos and you can have classes and it's free and it's just a space for you to be. Like, you can use top of the line cameras, computers. You could just be yourself. You could just go to a room and do whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? But like, if it's culinary, if it's, and not just arts, you know what I mean? If it's taxes and you are like 18, 19. If it's your entrepreneur, we got entrepreneur classes. Even if it's not a physical space, it's a website where, hey, I'm, I'm, I happen to be someone of influence. I got homies in the music industry. Hey, bro, I, I need a favor from you. I need you to run this course for like 10 weeks. I just need you to like teach them how to do basic chords on a, on a piano. Record it and I'll pay you so they don't gotta pay me or they don't gotta pay you. And then now it's just a free resource. You feel me? Because like, I taught myself how to use Photoshop and Adobe Premiere when I was in third grade. But that's because it wasn't a lot of clutter. Like it wasn't, you go on Twitter or you go on social media and <laughs> somebody girlfriend on stage, you feel me, with a, with a singer or something like that. And that's the topic of discussion. <laughs> Crazy, by the Yo. way. <laughs> but. You could stream a lot, like you could type in I, how, do, how to do such and such, how, how to render a photo on Photoshop. And a nigga is not getting paid to share that information with you on YouTube. There was no creators. It was like, I want to help people. It took me a while to learn this. I'm going to share it. It was a 50 second video. Now I'm looking at cameras, like looking at lenses. I'm like, I need to know how this lens works. The video is 10 minutes. First four minutes of video, this is sponsored by it. Isn't it? Like, bro, you feel me? So I just wanted it to be a place where like, it ain't gotta be all the extras and you ain't gotta sort through and sift through to find what you wanna find and what you need. Um, and then outside of those resources, financial of course, like I think that's the biggest barrier. So like anything I ever wanna do is to be able to give it away to the people that I think deserve it more or most. Um, and that's not for me to deem worthy, you know what I mean? That's why I open it up and be like, nominate somebody. You know what I mean? Like, tell me who you think is doing a good job. You know what I mean? Even then, like, I'll go through stuff, but like, I'll go through it with a bunch of people. You know what I mean? Or I'll go through that list or not go through the list and have my mom go through it. Cause I'm like, what do you think of the youth? Cause maybe I'm out of touch. You know what I mean? And um, I just think I owe it to the people that support me. I think that's my responsibility. You know what I mean? It's a heavy one, but it's, I, 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 I don't really need much. You know what I mean? I'm fortunate to be in the position I am, and I just want to help people reach their dreams as well, if, if I can, you know what I mean? Okay, um, something that I really want to talk about is- Let's expression. talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> is expression. I feel like expression is something that's really big, especially as of recently. And like being a black man, how you express yourself, it's become Almost controversy, right? Um, I see you got your earrings in, I got mine too. You got your hair done, I got my hair done. Like, yeah. But, like, <laughs> being, like, I'm African proof. Wait, wait. Like, and being what I am, it's yeah. easy to go home or, like, go to see family members and for them to immediately judge me just on Yeah, family. as soon as you said know, that, I was like, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's easy to, for them to look at me and, like, have a stigma of what I'm like already. Yeah. And I know that you've been talking about it recently about how it doesn't necessarily matter how somebody expresses themselves, yeah. how they necessarily do it. So can you speak a little bit on that and like what your journey has been with that? Um, we talk about the nails, ain't we? We talk about <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, um, I mean, I don't know, it's just, I think we get too caught up in the things that don't matter. You know what I mean? Like, ain't nobody hurting nobody, so it don't matter. I don't, 
I genuinely don't care about nothing nobody doing if they're not hurting nobody. If you're not harming nobody, if you're not making nobody feel no worse, I don't care what you do. Whether that's orientation, whether that's identity, whether that's paying your nails, whether that's your peers, I don't give a fuck, bro. Like, be happy, do whatever you want to do. Just don't cause no harm to nobody. You know what I mean? Like, that's it, bro. You know what I mean? It's so many more things to be mad about. And we waste our time on things that don't matter. Because we want to, like, have this control over something because so many things in life aren't controllable. So I'm gonna control this other person. You know what I mean? I'm gonna police this other person. But like, that shit don't matter. You just gotta stand on 10 toes about what you wanna do. I ain't got no real reason why I'm like, yeah, I pay my nails because I just like have my nails paid. It's straight. You know what I mean? Like, it's cool. It's another way to express myself. But like, who is someone else telling me I can't express myself in a way as I see fit? Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm the same go for me. I can't tell nobody else anything else. And um, shit, my family love me. You know what I mean? Like they support me, they do whatever I want, even if they didn't, you know what I mean? But I also have ha had their support to be myself for so long mm -hmm. that like when it get beyond them, I'm not even thinking about it. You know what I mean? Like people would be like, hey, you got your nails paid? I'm like, damn, I do. Oh shit. You know what I mean? Like, cause I didn't forget. Like it's just a part of my day. You know what I mean? But like. I don't know, bro. I just think we get caught up in things that don't really matter. And then, like, people, the effects of that is people not being themselves. Mm -hmm. And when somebody's not being themselves, they be something else. And when you're not being yourself, when you're being something else, you always gonna do it wrong. You know what I mean? You're gonna do it wrong. And that's dangerous, too. You're dangerous to yourself and you're dangerous to other people. You know what I mean? If you feel like you need to be tough, but you're not a tough, nigga you gonna go overboard to prove it. And what does that look like? You know what I mean? And just like, just let people be yourself, bro. And like things probably will go a lot better in that direction if we just stop trying to tell people what to do and who to be. Mm. Are y'all fake clapping these real claps? <laughs> I'm fucking with Binghamton. Binghamton? Yeah, just, you don't, I, don't pronounce the A. I'm, it's, it's the Binghamton. Bingham? Binghamton. 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 Yeah, you don't pronounce the A. So wait, she was making me think it was, a P, it was the P I was saying. You said Binghamton. Binghamton. Yeah, Binghamton. Yeah, trade, yeah, trade, like that. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Y'all niggas not even from here. Y'all from, <laughs> from the Bronx. <laughs> why, is, why does this mean so much to you? Um... A little bit on the topic of that, of expression and stuff like that. Um, we we're talking about how you have the support for that. Yeah. And a lot of young adults, teenagers, you know, like that age group that you're talking about that you want to impact the most, sometimes they don't have that. So how do you go about supporting them and making them know that whatever journey they're going through and trying to find yourself, because that's what you said, like we're all just figuring it out after a certain point. Um, how do you try and get that message across to them? Have any of y'all, do y'all follow me? Any of y'all follow me? Yeah. So y'all seen the whole like nail thing? Yeah. So like even me responding to that was for that reason. You know what I mean? Like I seen it go in a dangerous direction. It don't mean nothing to me if people are like, oh, he gay. It means nothing to me. You know what I mean? Because it takes nothing away from my identity, whatever you think. All right, I'm gay. What does that change? I'm still made the videos. I still make the clothing. Like what does it change? You know what I mean? But like I see the direction it was going where it was getting really hateful. And if I don't speak up and be like, no, nah, bro, like, it's, you can be whoever you want to be. What, what does this matter? I did that so like someone else that does watch me, that does support me, um, saw that they could just stand in their truth and be whoever they want to be. You know what I mean? And like, you don't got to do no explaining to anybody about who you are. You just got to show up. But that's, 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 I would say that's like, that's why I get so... transparent that's why i post on my story these long things about how i'm doubting myself that's why i post like yeah i have imposter syndrome all the time you know what i mean or that's why like i'll send letters from the you matter page directly written from me in my notes app about what it means to be black and that that's something to be proud of you know what i mean like i understand the responsibility that i have and like it never once feels like a burden because it's it's funny, it's weird, because it's like, if somebody look up to me, then they, they instantly gonna be better than me. 
because I didn't have nobody to look up to in, this, in the same direction of like expression. So if you start being and looking up to me how I am right now at 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, you're going to be better than me. You know what I mean? And so it's like, why would I stop being the person that you can look up to? And so I just always try to be as open, as vulnerable, as present as who I am every single day. Whoever I am that day and how I feel that day, I'm going to show you. I'm not, I don't think there's ever been a moment on social media where I'm like, yeah, this perfect me. You know what I mean? Even when like, I got my hair down, I'm like, this is a horrible day. <laughs> and the story reflects it, you know what I mean? But then it's just like, as I go through my motions, as my life works, I try to be as human as possible, at least to what I think being a human is. And that's the ups and the downs. What's y'all over here whispering about? Trying to organize everything. Fair enough, I feel it. Yeah. I'm chilling, man. <laughs> For our next topic, we're going to be talking about mental health and the You Matter brands. Well, my week, um, literally like a few weeks ago when it was we were planning to have you come here, I saw a girl in my class wearing You Matter hoodie. I was like, you should, you should keep an eye out for who's going to be keynote speaker. So like automatically just seeing that, I was able to kind of like tell someone like, you know, come be part of like this community, come be part of like this event. Um, for those of you who don't know, You Matter, the brand started by Demetrius in 2017, was made to advocate and start the conversation on mental health, to encourage people to speak up on their feelings and just to spread love. Um, he was one of the first influencers to shed light on such a topic and the brand has become a notable statement that has blossomed into a lovely community. Um, yeah, this is like my hoodie that I bought in like 8th grade and I've had it since. You was in 8th grade? Yes. He was not a fucking 8th grade. Are you in college right now? Yeah. You a freshman? I'm a sophomore. You were not 8th grade, I bro. I was in like 8th or 9th grade. Wow. Like 20, wow. But yeah, like just having the hoodie, it's definitely impacted my life. And you know, following up with your content has definitely made me feel comfortable speaking up on mental health like i've been in therapy for like two years now and like i've had a rough teens teen years um but now i can definitely say like um i'm able to speak up on like how i feel without um you know getting comfortable like you have to be uncomfortable and be vulnerable in order to become comfortable and so i just want to like say that to you personally like you've impacted me on a personal level um On college campuses, mental health is an important topic that impacts the lives of many, and if not all students go through hard times. So what is your approach when discussing mental health topics, considering that the stigma still unfortunately surrounds these issues? Oh, God. You made a young nigga cry, man. Because <laughs> you definitely was an A for when I was dropped. I did the math. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lie. I'm being so badass. Oh my god. Oh, thank you, thank you. What I'm gonna do with this little ass thing? <laughs> thank you, though. See, the problem is I got I got shea butter uh, oil on my face, so when I wipe my tears, they just blend into the. It's stupid. Oh. Can you repeat the question? Oh. <laughs> um. What is your approach when discussing mental health topics, considering the stigma still unfortunately surrounds it? I don't have any approach. Just talk about it. Yeah, I mean, that's all we can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's what getting away. Like, I have a team, you know what I mean? Like, for you matter. And um, it'd be certain shit, they'd be like, what you think about this? I'd be like, nigga, no. Because <laughs> I feel like you're trying to market something. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to write an uh, open letter, and I, I'll talk, but I'm like, let me like get myself there. I gotta, I gotta be prepared to go to that place. You know what I mean? But like, my goal of like, I don't like being perceived. It's, it's the scariest thing in the world. But my goal ever <clears throat> is like, even with public speaking, you know what I mean? Even with you matter, like, when you look at me, it's like, oh yeah, like he cool, smiling dude, 
funny. Cool, like dress, boom, boom. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna talk too much about myself. <laughs> but it's like, if I if you didn't see my page and you just saw me outside, you would think I'm normal. I am normal. It's normal to go through things. It's normal to have deep emotions. It's normal to have trauma that you don't work on. You know what I mean? Like when people first discovered me, it was funny stuff, and like that comes from a place. You know what I mean? The only reason I'm making three videos a day is because I. I don't want to be like I got out of school and I don't know what to do. I don't want to do my homework. I don't know. I don't want to think about the future. I'm just on my phone. You know what I mean? Like I'm escaping. You know what I mean? And so um, my approach, I would say, is just being as raw as possible. And like I would say, the only thing I consider is um, not being triggering. You know what I mean? Um, I don't really talk too deeply when it's like self harm or when it's things like that, like I'll talk over it cause that's my experience. But I just try not to say anything that'll make anybody relapse or anything that'll make anybody um, just reflect too deeply. You know what I mean? I, I try to be as, anytime I speak about what I'm going through, it has never not ended hopefully. You have never read a post about my mental like journey, even if I'm like, yeah, like I've, Man, March, I was really suicidal. You've never read it and been like, I need to check up on Meech. It's always been like, Meech's like, yeah, but tomorrow nigga will be a better day. And that's not fake though. Like I have that real thought that's like, bro, it's been bad for a month. But if I, if I take myself out of the game now, it can never get better. And I'm not the type of nigga to quit. You know what I mean? Like I like seeing things through. And so it's like, even if I gotta go through the darkness, Cliche as it is, it's a light at the end of the tunnel, you know what I mean? And so like, I would say my main approach is just trying to be as open, honest, but always like share this optimism that I have deep in my heart and like hoping that that rub off on the reader. <laughs> Bro, y'all, these are not real claps. There's no way. I feel like this is like a family matter set. <laughs> Kind of a follow-up question. But, um, I'm in two organizations. I'm in the Black Center Union, and I'm also in an org called Pretty Girl Sweat. We have some of our Woo! shout out to y'all. Um, Pretty Girl so, Sweat. Yeah, Pretty Girl Sweat. So it, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you said Pretty Girl Sweat. I guess that's hard. And then he said Sweat. I'm like, I'm not following no more. Um, our organization is dedicated to ending childhood obesity and empowering college-age women on their fitness journey. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, we've had a lot of good events so far this year. Okay. Shout out to you guys. So, um, we I noticed that you've been in the gym a lot lately. So I wanted to ask you, how has fitness <laughs> improved your physical and mental health? And what is some advice for someone who wants to get on their fitness journey? The gym is all I got. Oh my goodness. It's like the cornerstone of my day. And like, I just got a dog. Those two things. <laughs> but the gym, I wake up, it don't matter what time I wake up, I can wake up at 6 a.m., I can wake up at 10 a.m., I can wake up at 2 p.m. because I don't want to go to bed. Whatever I do, I need to have eaten maybe twice, three times before I hit that gym. Probably twice. And I need to have had a protein shake and a snack before that gym. All right, if I'm going to get all that in, am I, am I cooking it? Am I going to get the food? Am I door dashing it? So now it's structured throughout my day even before I get to the gym. You feel me? I got to schedule time to actually eat. You know what I mean? So then with those scheduled times, if I need 30 minutes to eat or if I need an hour, 30 minutes to prep and cook the food, all right, now I have to do work. So I'll probably should go out of bed right now and go do that work that I need to do so I can meet those calorie goals. So then after I eat, all right, cool. Take you a little second, watch your TV. And then what? So it just, it just has helped me in as far as like scheduling out my day. Because after the gym, I'm coming home, I'm eating, and I'm going to sleep. You know what I mean? Before that, I had no structure. I had no discipline of like, nigga, I can do shit whenever I want to do it. I can eat whenever I want. It don't change nothing. It don't matter. I don't care. But like now, I feel like I would be doing a disservice to the work that I'm putting in there by not putting the work in everywhere else in my life. You know what I mean? Like, I'm working my ass off in this gym. So I know I got to show up in the kitchen too. You know what I mean? But I can't let my business fall to the wayside for the gym. 
So I probably should go harder there too, you know what I mean? But like, it's something about being in the gym and doing something, like whether that's a, hitting a certain amount of reps that you didn't expect to hit, hit a new PR. And bef right before like you lift or you curl and you like, I don't know if I can do this, take that last deep breath. And then you exhale as you're doing the first rep. And you did it. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. It's like I'm move I'm physically doing something I thought I could not do. So what about these barriers I got in my mind? I could do anything. It's like it tells me literally, like, bro, you can do anything. If you, and like my my idea of life is that if I can conceive it in my mind and I can achieve it physically. So if I already achieved it physically, the things that I'm telling myself I can't do it in my mind, it's only not happening physically because I told myself. And that's been, that's been that. So I, I need the gym, you know what I mean? Like I go to the gym on my good days, on my bad days, I look forward to the gym on, on good days more than I do on bad days, you know what I mean? Cause like I breathe, I can literally breathe, you know what I mean? And I leave out the gym the most, I would say, balanced ever. If I'm too happy and I'm just ecstatic, I get that energy out of the gym. If I'm at my lowest point, I come out at least with that energy out of me, you know what I mean? And, and can transmute it into something. And it just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful feeling. Yeah, actually, I feel like that's something that a lot of people can resonate with. <clears throat> um, and I want to like know from you, because personally, the gym is something that I started and began my fitness journey at my lowest point mm -hmm. right so i used to be well over like 300 pounds like you know really big boy and um when i started my fitness journey and going to the gym it was related more so to my mental health um to how i felt about myself how like the struggle was and like things that i didn't want to personally like deal with mm -hmm. right so and like just like you said i was going every day if i was like making sure i had to skip a meal i'd skip a meal if i had to fast i'd fast like you know similar to that and like i don't think until after is when I had the realization of how much like the gym is in connection with my mental health. How did you go about finding that out for yourself um, and what that gym was like? Uh, I, I always liked the gym. Like I always like going to the gym because like my mom uh, is like not a health nut, but she had like her like fitness journey while I was still living in the crib. So we just had ways downstairs, elliptical. Like I used to read books while I was on elliptical when I was like 12. But it was never something I really cared about. Um, I would say like I, I just wanted to to do better. Like it was it was vanity at first for sure. Like it was like nigga, get in that gym, get you a chest, though. Stop playing. Like you getting too old to be walking around, one twenty five, bro. Like come on, stop playing. You know what I mean? Um, but then it got hard because I had celebrated Ramadan for the first time last year, and that was discipline. Another thing of discipline. You know what I mean? And like. I would fast all day, break my fast, go to the gym. So it became like all I had was like clearing my mind all day, being grateful to eat, and then being grateful to go to the gym. And then that was the rest of my night, you know what I mean? And so like, I would say I realized the effects of it on my mental health pretty soon because it, it happened around it, like a spiritual awakening as well. You know what I mean? Like I was getting closer to God and things like that. And, not even connecting it to God, um, cause I don't know anyone here believe in, but I would just say, bro, you connect to yourself. Like that, that mind body connection you get in the gym, it's, it's undeniable. And it's not even just has to be the gym, but just something where you get back to yourself. Cause I'm the type of person, I think so much that I can see my thoughts. And then when I see my thoughts, I space out and then I'm just out. So then I gotta come back present cause I got all this fucking weight on me. You know what I mean? And um, I would say the other thing, it was something I wanted to say and I lost it. But yeah, it's just, oh yeah, it is. I used to self-harm. And I've just always been looking for a way to do it healthily. Healthily, yeah. Do it in a healthy manner. And I guess this is it. You know what I mean? Like. It's, it's still unhealthy, I, I suppose, to a degree, but I don't go to the gym like, oh, I got a bad day, I need to hurt myself. But it feel good to like let out everything I feel 
You know what I mean? Like, I'd be driving to the gym and I'd be about to cry, bro. Like, fucked up. You know what I mean? And I get in that gym and I'm bright lights, people that, that you know what I mean? It's not like I put on a fake smile and like that, but I get in that gym and I could just, no headphones, no headphones, you feel me? And just breathe and just let it out and, and not feel like I'm crying. You know what I mean? And I feel like the release. And so it's just, it, it, it's impossible for me to ignore what it's done for my mental health and how it's been uh, a medium for me to get things out without it always having to be the same and feel like nothing changed. Sometimes you cry and you feel like nothing changed. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care if my body got any bigger. I don't care if I gain any weight anymore, man. My mind is safer for me now. You know what I mean? Audience, our community will be able to ask you some questions. That's okay. Y'all can ask me as many questions y'all want. I have nowhere to go in Binghamton. <laughs> um, I'm really chilling though. Like, like that's my favorite thing about like public speaking is like, like literally everybody here can raise their hand and have a question. And I will answer every question because like, y'all ain't come here to just have me just talk about what I want to talk about. Like I want to like answer and talk about shit that y'all care about. Like as like in the audience, you know what I mean. So my personal question for you is, well, I'll preface it. It's like, I have my best friend since kindergarten, her name's Allison, and like we literally grew up together. Now that we're <coughs> in college, I'm away from her a lot, but like I could speak to her tomorrow or like speak to her, like go two months without speaking and we link up like nothing ever happens. Um, so I wanted to ask you, how has your friendship with Angelo impacted you? Um, for those of you who know at Dope Island, yeah, I just want to know about that. Like, friendship's something important to me, so I want to know your perspective on that. I'm so sick of you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know, bro. Oh, fuck. I don't know why I just started crying, bro. Like, genuinely. I, you didn't even do nothing. <laughs> I think I just thought about my friendship with Angelo. Uh... I met Angelo when I was eighth grade. Uh, hated him. <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, bro. Cause look, listen. I've been going to this school for a minute. I just started getting cute. You know what I mean? I got the braces. I got the contacts. They flocking. Fucking light skinned man, green eyes show up. It's crazy. It was like pandemic. I was so I was so upset. <laughs> But um, we became friends. We found out like our my his dad lived up the street from my mom, and like we all in school together. So it's like at some point I don't really hate you, and I was like he's a cool little dude. Um, Angelo has me. And Angelo's relationship isn't one where it's like, hey bro, I'm gonna call you because I'm fucked up and I need to I need to get you talking about the situation. It's like when we hang out, if it's something on his heart, he's gonna get it off, like. At any point in time, it might be 2 a.m. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be, bro, that'd be the craziest thing. That's the most, like, that's my favorite thing. It's like, it don't matter how it come out. He did, like, I don't gotta filter myself. I don't gotta act any other way. Like, I don't gotta over, there's no overthinking in the friendship. Whether it's a problem I got with him, which is rare. Whether it's a problem he got with me, which I like to think is rare. Or if it's just me one event, like, I don't gotta think about how he gonna take this or how he gonna respond or, I might not even need his answer. I just need my best friend. You know what I mean? It'd be 2 a.m. We watching Transformers. This nigga like, yeah, man, I'm just, I don't know if I want to be in L.A. <laughs> and now we up an extra one hour to talk to him about his problems. You know what I mean? And like the fact you feel safe enough doing that while I'm one eye open watching a movie. You know what I mean? And you know I'm going to sit up, wake up and take it as serious as I could. You know what I mean? Like I'm myself with Angelo. Like that's my dog. You know what I mean? Like, there's no question in loyalty. There's no, I don't know. I don't even talk to Angela every day. We live, he live in California, I live in Michigan. You know what I mean? Like, but that's, man, that's, that's my dog. Like, when anytime somebody got a problem with me, they be thinking, I'm the problem. Angela be on that internet talking crazy. Like, 
behind me, you know what I mean? Because he know my heart, he didn't see how much I put into it. And that's how I feel about him. Like, I didn't talk, like, my niece and my nephew call him Uncle Lau. That's the only, that's the only person I've seen them call uncle that's not my blood brother, you know what I mean? Like, he been there since they was born. You know what I mean? Like, my mom called him son. His mom called me son. Like, his sister, his little sister is my sister. Like, his little sister's child is my nephew. You know what I mean? Like, that's my fucking family. And I ain't never had a sibling this close in age to me. But yeah, like, I would say meeting Angelo at the time, man, Angelo was so pivotal for me. Because I, I wasn't being myself when he met me. You know what I mean? I was finding myself and like, like I said, it's safe. So I think if I hung around certain people more, I would have tried to change who I was and I wouldn't have grew just naturally. But like, I just naturally grew in the person I was and like, it didn't matter to Angelo. He just accepted me as who I was. And that, that's where you get fucking meet and love from. <laughs> it's from two people just accepting themselves. Um, 10 minutes, what are we doing? Well, what we are doing for intermission is we have a bunch of post-it notes right there with affirmations that Nigga, what the hell? on the wall, um, <laughs> important things just like in the realm of the Matter brand. Um, we have tabling stuff over there for BSU, so you can check out a bunch of programming that we have. Folks can get a snack, use the bathroom. What does tabling mean? It's over there, right there with the lights of BSU. What is tabling? Yeah, it's like when you like show what your board does. Oh, that's not for me, is it? I mean, you can check it out. I'm gonna tap in. I'm the type of nigga to tap in, though. You mean, I'm to tap in. Okay, so honestly, guys, just project your voice. Um, we're gonna do raising of the hands, and KJ and I will call. And one last thing I'm gonna say again this is a safe space. You know, let's make sure that they need this space. You know, let's not allow people to be vulnerable and be vulnerable in that. Um, so yeah, first question, anyone, any takers? Damn, my head. Our friend right here, can you say your name, major? Hi, I'm Isaac, I'm a bio major, and um, man, I did not expect to be first, all right, so. I like how everybody got quiet, that was so respectful. Thank you. Um, I guess my question stems from when you were talking about escaping <clears throat> your passion and breaking mental barriers. So I was talking to you a little bit earlier before. I'm a music producer. I'm the treasurer of the Binghamton Production and Mixing. Mm -hmm. We actually have a couple people here that um, have worked with me before. Binghamton. And I've actually was wondering, how do you stay disciplined in terms of like using your passion in terms of, ah, sorry. Sorry. No, you're good, brother. I, wear this question. I'm, so I, I, <laughs> I guess my issue is personally is I want to work on my passion, but there's the other stuff in the way. Like, I'm a bio major. It doesn't really work well with music. So how do you find the time to use your passion progressively and, like, find that sweet spot of balance? Oh, OK. <laughs> I was thinking because it's tough for me because I, I I'm not in a predicament you in, like where it's such different balances. My like entire life is controlled by art. Um, so I was thinking like, what isn't? And um, actually everything else outside of me is, and that's the part where I got to balance where it's like relationships and family time and paying bills, like the f not fun shit, the being a dog dad. Like I don't get to, be, I'm passionate about those things, but they're not my passions. Like, you know what I mean? Um, I would say I, I kind of treat my passions like a little dessert. You know what I mean? Like, ah, now I get to have this cheesecake all to myself. You know what I mean? And like, I have insomnia, so it doesn't really bother me when I don't get no sleep. Like, um, and I'm not suggesting that's what you do, because I'm not in college. I don't know what 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 hours of sleep you need and what these things require from you. But I would just say like, just make sure you, you doing it for you. Cause then that's when you get lost in it. You know what I mean? And it's hard being creative in like a sense where it's like, oh, I'm a producer or oh, like I paint or oh, I'm on TikTok. Like, you know what I mean? Like 
where I'm giving it to the world and I'm looking at numbers, I'm looking at the response, I'm, you know what I mean? Um, but before you ever put it out into the world, it's just you in your room, in your dorm, with your friends, whoever it may be, just making something that make you happy. And it's like, um, I would say that's, <clears throat> you don't need discipline for it. You're gonna be disciplined in your passion because you want to do it. You need discipline in every other part of your life and being a bio major, you know what I mean? In study, in like being college. That should be the part where you be free is what I would suggest. <laughs> and that's the balance is like, what part of my life do I get to just be free and not have to think so much? And I would say that, I would suggest that that's the part that you decide to do is be free there. PPO. My question for you is when you recently had my panel, and one of the things they talked about was knowing your worth and where to place your value at. When you were first starting out as a black and influential figure and a creator, how did you know where to place your worth at when you had to go advocate for yourself? And then what advice do you have for young black people entering the workforce who have to go do the same thing, advocating for yourself and where to place your worth at? Shit. I took a crunch in the middle of one of those words, and you asked me, like, how did I learn where to place my value at, yes? Um, I don't know, I got bullied as a kid. <laughs> so I had to, like, figure out what I care about, what I value, what I stand for, what my morals are. I had to tell myself that a lot. And so, like, um, I, I hope I'm not answering in the wrong direction, but when it came time to show up and be myself and introduce myself, I didn't want to be anything else and be accepted for anything else besides myself when I got on the internet. I didn't want my brand to be represented as anything else besides like literally what I wanted to be. This is, this is the nucleus of the brand. This is the ethos of the brand. This is my character, what I stand on, my moral compass. I'm gonna represent that. It's not gonna fold no matter what y'all say or think of it. And, um, that's just, that's just, I, I don't think it come from me a bully, I don't think it come from anything else. It's just, I, I don't want to be accepted for anything besides who I am. I don't want to be successful without my morals, without my code. Because um, I've seen what that does to people. You know what I mean? Like, you can have all the success, all the claim, all the money, and nigga, you can't be up. You know what I mean? Um, my favorite thing that Kanye is, is ah, I was getting to like quote tangents, but it was this quote Kanye said in a song a long time ago, and he said, uh, "I never understood why people would reach a fake ass facade that they can't keep up." And it's like, bro, when you when you do some stuff that's outside of who you are, whether that's just like your character or if that's just not actually who you are, like now you have to consistently show up as a lie and that wears on your like person, that wears on who you are. You gotta take a mask off every day. You know how like when you wear makeup or you do your hair, you gotta take it down at the end of the day? That's another part of it, you know what I mean? You don't just get to be yourself and it's so freeing just being yourself. So I would say like, I really feel like I'm answering this question in such a wrong direction. But I, I would say that for me, the piece I have is like, Shit, if you don't like me, at least you don't like me and not the fake version of myself I'm showing up as. And if you love me, you love me for who I am. And that's even more beautiful. I am the most unrealistic person in thinking than you could possibly meet. Um, the, 
there's no like t I don't know I don't know I'm optimistic because like anything can happen I've seen it you know what I mean and like everything in life kind of points to being pessimistic you know what I mean like waking up and my, not like waking up and, <laughs> and my granddad passed away you know what I mean or like coming home and I'm excited to get these party next door concert tickets and my mom like your auntie passing away like every like I understand the uncertainty of life and because there is balance there's uncertainty in the good that means anything can happen at any point in time good or bad but we love to focus on the bad because that's what hurts the most it, that's what lasts the longest, but I remember so many fucking good moments of my life um, that I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen, you know what I mean? And I know like, you should be realistic, you should live in reality, but like, your reality is completely different from mine, so how can I tell you what you should live like or what you should think like? Cause like, how I see the world, how I view this room, like, we all got different perspectives, like realistically, you know what I mean? Like, how she sees me, that literally the angle she's at right now is completely different from that angle. You know what I mean? So that's like my mind is completely different. So like we might perceive things differently, we experience things differently. So shit, I just be here, you know what I mean? I just think I can do anything. And when it don't happen, it's not because it's impossible. That just means it might not happen today. You know what I mean? That's just kind of how I live my life. It's just like, if you want it, how bad do you want it? And what are you willing to do to get it? And like that's, I think that's the part that people miss out on a lot is that um, we have these desires, but we never like weigh what it requires to get them. You know what I mean? Like um, opportunity cost. Am I prepared and am I the person that is ready to handle and hold the responsibility of the things that I'm requesting? And if the answer is no, then I'm probably not going to get what it is that I'm asking for, or what it is that I think I deserve. And even if I do get it, I'm gonna waste that moment because I can't handle it. But I also watched fucking Naruto growing up a lot, and that nigga, <laughs> that nigga just kept telling people believe it and it happened, you know what I mean? So that's my idea of things. I love cartoons for that reason. There's no, there's no limits, you know what I mean? If you can draw, then it can happen. And like that's how I try to like imagine my life. Thank you. Hi, my name is Salome, and I wanted to mention something about like you know God being part of like your journey and like whatever that may be. I wanted to know like how has getting closer to God helped you in your journey? Uh, as <laughs> weird. I grew up like even right now. I don't have a religion. Um, I grew up in a like non-religious household. Oddly enough, because my dad's side of the family is from Alabama, my, all of them are super Christian, super religious. And um, it just was never a thing that like occurred in my family. But it was always around me, you know what I mean? Like my best friend in, in, in middle school, her dad's a, a minister, I'm going to church with them. If I spend a night at Angelo house, all right, you know it's Sunday, we're going to church at 10 a.m., so you better get out of here by 8. I'm like, nigga, all right, bro, we're going to church, all right. Why am I going to church with you if I live up the street? You know what I mean? Um, I can't describe it, you know what I mean? Like, I, I never, like, I looked into, like, religions, of course. Like I said, I, like, celebrated Ramadan last year. But it's always been the feeling of something bigger than me. And, like... I'm not here to tell anybody like, oh, like this religion is right, or like you don't believe in God, like you know what I mean, or you should, you know what I mean. But I understand what it feels like to have faith in something outside of your control, above you, working for you, and with you, and putting your trust and faith into that. Like it's, it's nothing more powerful than that. It's, it's a, it's a form of releasing and letting go. You know what I mean. But and then when you get into the religion that helps you structure your life. You know what I mean? Like when I was practicing for Ramadan, I came full throttle, my nigga, like no vices. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't smoking. I'm purging my body of anything. I'm not eating pork, you know what I mean? And like, I was even like listening to like, uh, like the Arabic prayers. But I would say that feeling that washes over you when you 
truly, like, from when we fasting, I'm not drinking water, I'm not eating. From sunrise to sunset, you break your fast with dates and water. Water ain't never tasted so good, but I didn't overindulge. You know what I mean? Like, for y'all that was in the, uh, the dinner we had prior to this, I, I forget who said it. There's like, it was a lot of drinks. There's a lot of things for one person. And I'm a gluttonous, you know what I mean? Jokingly, but like, that's one of like the deadly sins is it's gluttony. You know what I mean? Like, overindulging and just having an understanding of that, how appreciative and how connected to my body I felt. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, it has to be something bigger than me. You know what I mean? For life to work out in this way. Not even in the sense of like positioning or where I am, but just like the journey. I have to be connected to something bigger than me. You know what I mean? The trees, the animals, you know what I mean? Like I look into like my little brother's eyes and I'm like, bro, like there's no way it's just, this is just us. You know what I mean? It, it just, it provides me peace. I'm so happy when y'all say, I'm so happy when y'all say y'all major, y'all tell me what it is. Cause I was like, what? Um, I heard, oh, uh, you mentioned that you are a new dog dad. I love animals. Yeah. I got hell pets. Um, so I just wanted to know like, what was the most like, exciting part about maybe like, getting a pet or preparing, bringing home. Man, everything. The best thing, the best thing about her, my baby, my baby girl, Rika. I have two dogs. My other one is just older, but he's my support animal. He helped, he helped me through like get through all of the stuff I was saying about in high school and middle school. But uh, I would say my favorite part is seeing her learn to trust me. Like she's a she's a puppy, you know what I mean? And I I, I took her from home, so it never was like the first day she she lay with me, she slept with me. Like we spent a lot of time together. But from like a standpoint of hey nigga, like I gotta go outside. I'm doing my part. I went to the door. You do your part. Let me outside. Hey, it's 3 p.m. Like her learning the schedule, her not barking until it's 7.30 because I take her out at 7.30. It's damn near like she's like, all right, bro, like, come on. We're doing it. You know what I mean? Like I'm holding up my end. Like, I don't know. It's just, it, it feels good. Like, it's funny. My dad used to say this is my other dog, Domino. We got when I was like, when I was like 12. And my dad, my dad be trying to guilt trip niggas, bro. <laughs> my dad be trying to guilt trip niggas, and he used to be like, yeah, I'm not the only one that be excited when I come in the house. But that's how it be when I walk in the house. When I, when I walk in and Rika see me, she's like, oh, oh, fuck, what you mean? Ah, Jesus Christ, oh, God, I thought you left, I thought you died. And it just be happy, it be, it be good, bro. Like, good day, bad day, like, I'm just in this house by myself talking to this, this animal. It's beautiful, it's a beautiful time. Oh, that's funny. Oh, man. Hi, my name is Sachelli. I'm a sociology major. How did you know her by um, name? We do. Sorry? I didn't know how she knew her by name. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> you, you, okay, because I'm bad with names. Okay, so we attend a predominantly white university, and while I feel we do our best to be with one another, another and find community, it is easy to feel out of place at times. So as you emphasize community, can you provide us with some advice on how to maintain our community? Shit like this. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what y'all do day to day, you know what I mean? So I don't wanna say like, oh, like yeah, this might be the first time y'all done did this, but I don't need to be here for y'all to talk to each other like this. You know what I mean? Like, I again don't know y'all relationships with each other. You know what I mean? But um that, bro, like space. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I walked in here and I'm like, I like this. I like this a lot, the way it was set up. Cause I don't like when it's stage, boom. You know what I mean? I get to turn around and I'm at the same level as all y'all. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm a part of y'all community. You know what I mean? And I would just say that like, it's those things. It don't gotta be us sitting here talking about our mental health struggles or nothing like that. You know what I mean? Y'all could just come in this bitch and play Monopoly. You feel me, like, and just catch a vibe, you know what I mean, like, because then that also opens up just the space. Like, I was talking about, like, me and my friend Angelo, I'm like, we, 
man, we would get drunk, watch Transformers, or we could just go to Sky Zone and play dodgeball and beat up some little kids. You know what I mean? And at any point, it could go in that direction because we've created such a space to where he know it's safe to do so. You know what I mean? And so as y'all continue to foster that, just where it doesn't have to always be, I'm about to trauma dump. You know what I mean? Like I think that's the misconception when it comes to like community is just thinking of like what do my what what does it it need to be to like serve? I don't want to say fill voids, but just more so like the bad things, like the trauma or like the mental health things and yada yada. It's also just like being there. You know what I mean? Having fun. And the the more you push in towards that direction, the easier that direction is too. And then it's now you just made a full thing, if that makes any sense. But yeah, I would just say continue to be there for each other, like in the real way. You know what I mean? Like me and the homies play flag football. I think I'm the youngest person there, and I'm about to turn 26. This nigga's that's 32 playing flag football right now, outside in the snow, Christmas day. You got kids you need to go home to, and you playing flag football with me. You know what I mean? But like that's to the point where it means so much to us that we not gonna miss it if we can't, and if we end up missing it. It's because something was really important, you know what I mean? But like, that's what I would say is like, just being there for each other in every way y'all can. Whether that's hanging out, whether that's speaking, whether that's movie nights, whether that's, you know what I mean? Boom, it ain't always gotta be the, the tough stuff. Um, my name is Cicely, I'm a neuroscience major, and like, just on your journey of being black. You a what? A neuroscience. Come on now. I don't know. I think it, that's hard, yeah? That's hard to do, right? But, um, that's your brain? Yeah. <laughs> but like, speaking of neuroscience, like being black and talking about like mental health, there's always like that stigma, especially in the black community. And so like on your journey, was there ever like that moment like I'm really making a change specifically for our people? Cause it's like, they tell, oh, you shouldn't cry, like be strong, like, and things like that. But like, as black people, we go through so many things. So like in your journey, like, what was that moment where you were like, wow, I'm really like changing this and making it more open for us? Mm. I only started, oh. <laughs> I only started tearing up, like when, when I thought about my answer, cause it, it one was recent but it too was like in my own life and then it was like i released it and then um i read the comments and now it's like it was so like what i did was so close to home that I, like i was so i've been so honest about my mental health journey and about my trauma and things like that and the one thing i never did that i was ashamed of was like being abused by my dad and um, I did a documentary with my dad, like once we was like on okay terms, you know what I mean? Like we wasn't even the best of friends, you know what I mean? But once we was on okay terms, uh, I sat down with him and I chopped with him about like his, his, his life, his past, when he became a father when I was born, you know what I mean? Like I interviewed this nigga and I'm like, yeah, like, do you remember this happening? He like, yeah, like that was one of the worst days of my life. And I'm like, I think the effect of me is he's like I'm like I don't even remember it, nigga. Like I actually like forgot it happened because I blocked it out of my head. Like my mind blocked it out. I'm like I didn't remember it happened until I was like 18. Sharing something like that on the internet and then like going to the comments and somebody like yeah like like my daughter showed me this and it helped me understand her. You know what I mean? And I was scared to like share that. I had been so honest. I was being held up as this nigga that just, yeah, he's so vulnerable. And that was the one thing that like, I couldn't, I couldn't cope with it myself. You know what I mean? Like I was scared of my dad until I was like 23. You know what I mean? So that's only two years ago. Like I wouldn't even post my dad. You know what I mean? Like I post my little brother and he's like, oh, his mom, his mom got a kid. Cause that's how much I post my dad. You know what I mean? And it just like, I would say that, that's when it was, cause like even talking to my dad and that shit, he like, yeah, like if you wasn't who you is, I probably would've never like understood it to this level cause you forced me to. 
I can't be a parent without understanding and like diving deeper into my own emotions and my own problems. And it's like, I don't know, it's like, fuck what? Not even fuck it, but it's like, I'm. it, it was reassuring that like, to know I always been like this, I always been this emotional ass kid. And I didn't have like nobody but my mom when I was growing up to be like, it's okay to have these emotions. All she said was it's okay. I dove deeper and found out why I have them, yada, yada, you know what I mean? But that's all it took was like, it's okay. I didn't know that growing up, you know what I mean, that black boys specifically, or like black who specifically have a really strong problem against mental health, you know what I mean? That needs work and needs fixing until I got into the world. So even just speaking as a black man, it's like, you get these black kids coming up to you, you know what I mean? Like my niece, my nephew coming to me and talking to me about like, like bro, my nephew told me he like struggled with, with depression. I'm like, what are you telling me? But I'm not thinking about the fact he see everything. You know what I mean? I'm not thinking about the fact you old enough to be on YouTube. And you just feel safe from the shit you saw me do on YouTube. You know what I mean? And who I am in your life. Like, I just, it just started hitting me like a year or two ago. I'm gonna unplug that bitch by mistake. I had pressed a little button. <coughs> um, any more questions? Um, now I see you, and then any other questions? Hi, my name's Gianna. I'm a junior psychology student major. I wanted to tell you your fucking button, the little edges. Great. Thank you. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I'm a junior psych major, and kind of a little bit of background about me. Like, um, right before I came to college freshman year, my younger sister passed away. And, like, long story short, it affected me mentally and in turn affected my academics. But, you know, thankfully it was a long journey coming back from that, like, building myself back up. And I know different people can have different understandings of life and death, so I just wanted to ask, like, what was your outlook on grief and mental health if you've lost anybody? First off, um, first off, I want to give you my condolences. Um, I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, <clears throat> I'm horrible with the mic. I'm gonna be honest. I get the coughing in the mic and shit. But uh, that's all I think about. All I think about is life and death, cause like. Like, a lot of my core memories happen from, like, first grade to, like, like youth memories happen from, like, first grade to fourth grade. I remember so much at that time. And it just feel like it was a golden era. Like, it feel like, like when I, even when I visualize it, like, it's, like, saturated. And the color left, um, I have a cousin named Chico. And he used to drive me to school every day with my other cousin, Kalen, and his son, Chico. He'd drive, he'd, no, my mom would drive us to school, and he'd pick us up from school. In third grade, Chico committed suicide. And that feels like that's when all the color went away. And I want to say fifth grade, my godmom was murdered. In seventh grade, my aunt passed away. In eighth grade, my granddad passed away. In tenth grade, my aunt Sarah passed away. And so on and so forth. And it just feels like it's just been death. And um, that's all I think about. It's like death and life, coincidentally, because they're connected. And um, trying to find purpose in it, trying to understand it, trying to grieve through it. And um, it's hard as fuck. And I can't even imagine, like you said, your sister. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's something that we know is inevitable, but it's something we never can prepare ourselves for. And it's something that you, like the space that's missing from that person being gone, you can never replace. But <laughs> the, the things that keep me okay, or at least like bring me back, is like, I can still hear my aunt voice like in my head, you know what I mean? 
Like I can hear it. <laughs> I can remember it. I I I associate red lipstick on a woman specifically only with my my with my aunt. You know what I mean? I drink Heineken's. No other beer. Cause of my grandfather. Like I I forced I damn near force myself to like Heineken's. Anytime I open one, I'm drinking it for him. You know what I mean? And like of course honoring, but like I just try my best that every time there is a thought, it don't gotta be one that break me down. Even though like as I'm talking to you this right now, like I'm like, damn my aunt didn't get to see this. Like she didn't get to see see me get here. You know what I mean? Or like damn, like my granddad didn't get to go to the best get the best seats at the T Tigers game or the nigga didn't get to see the Lions go to the NFC championship. You know what I mean? Like I get fucked up by shit like that. Um but I just try to honor them. Cause like at, again, like at the end of the day, it's, it, that's what all we have in this life. Those are the most consistent things. There's gonna be life and there's gonna be death. Anything that's born is gonna die. It's just, it's life is unexpected as fuck. Beyond our own comprehension, beyond our own acceptance, and like, I think if we had more, if if more people thought about how unexpected life is there would be a more a lot more I love yous. There would be a lot more like, hey, be careful. There would be a lot more like thought put into things, you know what I mean? Because like, when my uncle passed away, I, <laughs> I don't got no pictures of a dog, you know what I mean? Like, my last memory is coming home and I'm seeing him in the hospital pit, holding his hand, you know what I mean? Like. As recently as fucking, I want to say maybe this summer, my 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 brother-in-law, my stepbrother got shot. Twelve times, and made it. You know what I mean? But I'm watching him, fucked up. I'm watching him, probably 250 pounds, six three, grown man, with tubes in him. When they finally take it out, and, and I'm thinking he's going, it's doing better. He crying to his nurse and his mom about how he don't want to be here. He, it's too hard. You know what I mean? And like, I just don't think anyone thinks about death enough. I think it's too morbid of a topic, but I think it's like, not thinking about death is like avoiding your bills. It's, it's coming. It's, you have to. You know what I mean? And I just think when someone time does come as unfortunate as it is, the most selfless thing we could do is um, just honor them by continuing to live, but also like live with them. You know what I mean? Like when I walk in the room, it ain't just me. I got my, my ancestors with me, you know what I mean? I got my peoples with me, like I feel it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> funny or fuck enough, we doing the Saturn release and uh, my team like, yeah, can we do early access? My team like, yeah, is there any password you wanted to be and my first instinct is like auntie sarah you know what i mean it's to let people into the site is auntie sarah it don't make no difference i can, put, I can make it many words i wanted it to be but my first thought is to make it somebody that's passed away not that that means anything to anybody besides me you know what i mean like but at least like her name being said at least she here for it you know what i mean like we did these why am you vintage shirts like the, nobody knows this. i didn't even explain it Last year, I want to say we did the YMU Vintage shirts, like the wolves and shit on it. It got everybody in my life that passed away year that they was born on it. And it's like, that, that don't, it might not mean nothing to the next person, but this is for me. And this, like, immortalizes them. You know what I mean? Like, my upstairs, I'm rambling, but my upstairs in my house is just pictures. Like, I got a painting done of everybody in my life that's passed away. My grandfather, my aunt, and just put a light over their head. And I put a vase next to them, and I put a flower in there every day. And I, and I, I just want to see them. I want them part of it. I want them here. So I, I would just say it's honoring them. It is the grieving. But just feel it as it comes. When, when, it's, when it's hard, feel it. And when you feel like, hey, I'm making her proud, feel that too. You know what I mean? But don't do the disservice of trying to push her out of your brain. Because we keep them alive by keeping their name and keeping their thought with us.
My arm was my first tattoo. <laughs> I got her name on my chest, and then uh, this says, uh, love you very much, Auntie Sarah. It's hard to say. It's hard to hear this. I feel like, <laughs> how old are y'all? Old. <laughs> <laughs> you're twenty-one. How old are you, nigga? I'm old as shit. You're not twenty. You're not old. I'm old, brother. Are you a master's degree? No, I got my associate. What the fuck is this nigga? How is this? Why am I? Am I got the fucking Carfax on this nigga? <laughs> what are we talking about? You're like 20, old as shit. I'm twenty-five. How old are you? I'm your age. You're twenty-five. Yes, sir. I believe this nigga. But, I don't know. <laughs> huh? You lie, you lie, you lie. You lie, you lie. You lie, I'm not. I'm not. There's no way to make it 25, bro. Like shit. But, um. <laughs> it's hard to say this to college students. Like, it's hard for me to be like, oh, because, like, my answer, my immediate answer is like, your life not defined by right now. It's not. You're 21. You're 21. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it might feel like you live a lot of life. You haven't. And I know I haven't either. Because I got homies that's 30. And they like, nigga, we just now getting to where I want to be. I'm just now getting the car moving. You know what I mean? So, like, it's not about, like, a game of comparison. You know what I mean? Like, of, like, a, oh, well, at least I'm in this type of college. Or at least, like, boom, boom, boom. Like... It's just more so like, at least map out what you want your life to look like. Don't set it with no, all right, by 30, I'm gonna have kids and it's gonna, look, yeah, all right, you feel me? Because then you set the expectation and then if it don't happen, you feel like you failed. But it's like, what do you really want out of life? And not just the career, not just, you know, the material things, but like, are you happy with where you live? What, the career that you want, where could that take you as far as location? Are you happy with those locations? You know what I mean? Really dive deep of like, what you want your life to look like now when you 35, but shit, at least when you, you're 21, at least when you're 25, at least when you're 22, at least when you're 23 and realize that like, we got as many opportunities as, as we need. You know what I mean? Like life is gonna show you, pay attention to what life is showing you though. You know what I mean? Like. I don't force none of this shit. And that's hard too, like I know, because I don't know everybody's backgrounds. You know what I mean? Like some of y'all might come from immigrant parents. You know what I mean? And I know how that can be. You know what I mean? But I was just telling my, my, my like, she's like my cousin. I don't fucking know. Uh, you know, black people. <laughs> she's something. She's something. She's family now. But she just, she just got to college. She go to USC and she run track. And she hit me like, um, what do you think about me uh, pledging? I don't fucking know about it. Oh, you, what do you want from me? She's like, I'm thinking about pledging to the Deltas. I'm like, straight. Like, why are you thinking about doing that? It's like, oh, like, I fuck with them. I like a lot what they do with the community and like, boom, boom. I'm like, sound good to me. I was like, I thought she was going to be like an AKA. And she was like, yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you think this is something I shouldn't be doing, you need to let me know. She's like, because my mom want me to be AKA. I was like, is your mom AKA? She was like, no. Nah. I'm like, then why the fuck do it matter? I was like, even if she was, why do it matter? And she's like, if you think I shouldn't do this, talk me out of it. I was like, you came to the wrong nigga to talk you out of something. And it's like, bro, if you want to do anything, and it's like, this is the best time to do it. Because you ain't got no kids, I hope. <laughs> like, y'all got responsibilities, you know what I mean? Like, y'all are in school. There is tuition, there is student loans, but like, y'all get to safely figure it out. 
at least that's what it always felt like for me because I didn't go to college. Like, I felt like, nigga, if this Bond, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, phone line, acting, whatever the fuck I was doing at the time, shit don't work, nigga, I'm gonna end up homeless on Hollywood Boulevard. Because I moved to LA at 18 with nothing, no backup plan. You know what I mean? Like, no structure. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't even have a space to do this. If I wanted a gathering of me and niggas when I was 18 was a party with beer pong. Like, you know, that was it. That's the only time I can get niggas to gather around. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't have these resources, these opportunities. I'm not saying that I shut the fuck up, be grateful. I'm saying breathe. Like, you don't need to figure it out about today. You don't need to have it figured out about tomorrow. Just make sure it's a thing that you care about. Care about your life, care about the things you want to do. And it'll fall into place. It'll naturally, like, come to you. Life will tell you what your purpose is and the, th the change is the direction, the person you need to become to receive those things and be open to it. But like I said, like, y'all got, y'all have so many resources. Just be open to receiving them and using them and accepting them and, like, being a vessel. And does that make sense? I just be talking, bro. Yeah, that's what I feel like. When I, when I get to talking to people, I'm like, God damn it. I'm doing it again. I haven't wanted to fast for a minute, but like my girlfriend at the time was Lebanese. And so uh, just kicking with her, you know what I mean? And, and wanted to support her because she was in uh, med school at the time, like her last year of med school. So I'm like, you got these long hours, boom, boom. Like I'll go through something that you naturally do and show you that I'm dedicated to it, you know what I mean? I always wanted to do Ramadan, but like, I, I'm not tapped into Dearborn. I'm not going to the bakeries. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't really know what to do. So I'm like, you get to show me this and I get to show you my support. And then, um, it also like, oh, I'm really picky eaters, so open up my like food palate. So I mean, fatouche, I mean, fucking shawarmas. I, like, I'm, I'm at the bakery outside. You feel me? Like, I'm learning Arabic. I'm, I'm tweaking out. You know what I mean? No, I always wanted to do the Arabic hoodies, but it was easier to do it. Um, when I had someone directly that like saw me as an ally, cause like it, it could be kind of hard with um. I I know. In general, you know what I mean. Anytime you're an ally to a, a culture, um, there's like a vetting process, cause like especially like cultures that have been stepped on. You know what I mean, um. You get kind of suspicious, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I, I want y'all to know, I genuinely, there's a lot of respect here. And I see y'all as my brothers and sisters because I went, like, bro, I grew up around so, like, my mom lives in an Arab neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like, full on hijabis. You know what I mean? Like, we live in Dearborn. Like, if anybody look up Dearborn, that's what you're going to see is Arabs. You feel me? That's all I seen growing up. So I never knew to think no differently. And I'm happy that, I'm happy for that. You know what I mean? And I just try to make you matter represent, to some degree, the things I care about too. You know what I mean? And like, um, I always wanted to do different language, like you matter hoodies, and then donate the proceeds to whoever is it, whatever countries that speak that language is affected. You know what I mean? Like or have or needs resources. <clears throat> and there's always something going on in the Middle East. And so I was like, who better to start with than like my brothers and sisters back home? You know what I mean? And um, how Ramadan affected me, it was a breeze. Cause I, I, I have insomnia, so like, it's easy for me to start eating at, at sunset, for the first time, drink water, boom, 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 work out, and then eat, 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 wake up before sunrise a little bit, have me a little meal and go back to sleep, and wake up at 2, 3 p.m. This, oh my, I was like, bro, this is, 
I'm in heaven. What are we doing? It was great. Niggas, the restaurants is open at 2 a.m. I mean, like, they open it up at 2 a.m. Are you crazy? You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. Are you kidding me? Then, then they got, like, the, I forget what it's called, but it's, like, it's like a malt drink. It's like a beer, but it's, like, apple flavored. I was, man, I was tweaking the hell out. I was eating the, oh, my goodness. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh. That was tough maybe for like a week. You know what I mean? Just off of like withdrawal of like if I'm smoking vapes. All right, now. Uh, you said for me, was it? Yeah. Uh, mm, I'll probably say it was drinking. Like alcoholic beverages in general was the hardest. Um. Vaping wasn't that hard just because, like, I vape from oral fixation. And so, like, I could do that from a toothpick. You know what I mean? Or, like, that's, that was just tough because, like, I'm not going to I usually eat sunflower seeds. And, like, I can't eat sunflower seeds. So I'm just fucking fucking these toothpicks up. You know what I mean? But uh, it truly, honestly, wasn't that hard once because I knew why I was doing it. You know what I mean? It's like if I give up now on weekend, I'm giving up on myself. You know what I mean? And, like, I just wanted to prove myself that I could do that. And it, it was a beautiful experience. After the first week, it wasn't even like a thought. It was like, I was looking forward to it. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, I, I heard P. I heard P. I heard PHM. Okay. PHM for us by us. Okay? On three. Okay. On okay. okay. There's a video? Okay, I'm like, that's not gonna make me smile. Are you ready? BHM for us by us. BHM for us by us. Niggas had to wave it in black fist. <laughs> this waving a black fist is crazy. Oh. Uh, my butt. Yes, I can. One second. I'm about to turn this camera off real quick.